Even though it doesn't look like we're justified, we are righteous in the sight of God. We cling to the promise that we are. And then we will give all glory to God. So what really drives you? Let me conclude with a very dangerous illustration in this part of the world, uh, a sailboat analogy. Uh, I'm neither a sailor nor the son of a sailor, and uh, there are many of you here who will probably upbraid me at the end, but I'm going to tell it anyway because it, it, it's my opportunity to tell my own story my way. Uh, <laughs> you have a sailboat, and it's, gear, it's equipped with all the latest gadgets and gear, all the best technology. You know exactly where you are, and you know where you need to go. And so you set your course. You say, this is where I want to be, and it, it almost drives itself. But you, you get out of the harbor, and uh, once you're way out of the harbor, there's no wind. It's a dead calm. You have no mo motor. You're just sitting there. And you hear on the radio, this nice, fine radio that tells you everything you need to know and do, tells you that a squall is coming. And you know what? That, those gadgets and that radio cannot get you out of the danger of that oncoming squall. All they can do is tell you about the danger. All that they can do is tell you where you should be, but you aren't. You need wind in your sails. And a lot of Christians, a lot of Christians go sailing out of the harbor with the wind in their sails, forgiven, understanding grace, understanding the gospel. But then, I don't know, I guess the assumption in the church was you only need the gospel when you get saved. You don't need to be driven by the gospel in your Christian life. Now you mean you'd be driven by rules. You didn't see the fine print? You signed. You signed it. Now here's all the fine print. So now it's all about the instruction manual. And people find that they're dead in the water. They can't move. They have all the best advice in the world. They know how to raise positive kids in a negative world. They know how to uh, buy uh, houses with no money down. They know how to improve their bodies. They know how to fix their marriages. But they are finding, and they can't say this to anybody, but that they wish they weren't Christians anymore. They're shriveling. They're losing their hope because the gospel's not being preached into them. We never get to the place where the law is alien and the gospel is familiar. Throughout our Christian pilgrimage, the law will always make sense. And the gospel will always be strange. Let's be directed by God's purposes for our life but let's be driven by His promises. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, you that You have given us in Jesus Christ, the seed of Abraham, all great and precious promises, all ultimately realized in the most precious promise of all, namely that we are justified and united to Christ through faith, from which we receive all benefits of this inheritance. Thank you that we are not employees working on a contract basis, but that we are sons and daughters who have inherited the whole estate because of the faithfulness of your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen.